we exercise our faith, we're embracing that revelation that he gave us, that revelation. Grace has to do with revelation, illumination, enlightenment. As Abraham was enlightened by God, and Abraham reciprocated to God, okay, and upon that reciprocation, he returned back to God. Okay, returning to God, which has to do with a form of a journey. Okay, we came into this dimension. God put us within this dimension to test our choices of faith. Those which choose obedience would be consenting to the terms of the covenant, a covenant which God would give. So we, when we read the epistles, we're reading the, the terms of the covenant. The terms of the covenant are Jesus Christ. Okay, that Jesus Christ provided us these things in himself at the Last Supper, when Jesus partook of the wine and the bread. Drink you all of it, he said. This is the covenant or testament of my blood. Okay, that this would be sealed. Okay, that God, sealing this in his blood, would swear and open that upon these terms that he would receive us back to himself. So God gave us a covenant with terms. And here the Apostle Paul, writing this epistle, is showing us the terms of our reciprocation. Okay, our terms of reciprocation must be in this frame or boundary called truth. So truth uh, defines to us what these boundaries are, which is consistent. Truth is consistent with God's character, his purpose, and his plan. If any one of these uh, threads of the rope are missing, then the rope will break. Okay, we, a rope is made of threads that are weaved. Okay, when the threads are weaved, it becomes a rope. Okay, now, this rope, the rope, the tethering of our faith, it has to do with all these tokens. The government, government, truth, and spirit. Prayer, preaching, and prophecy. The gifts and the callings and the graces of God. So these things are provided for us for our peace. So when we begin this epistle, okay, we see the word justified, and we see the word faith, we see the word peace, we see the elements being explained. Okay, the elements are explained in the face of God or in wholesomeness. The elements are explained in the face of God or in wholesomeness. So we stand before his face okay, according to Christ. This is the language which God gave to Moses and which Moses communicated to the priesthood that they will walk before the face of the Lord okay, or in wholesomeness. In wholesomeness. Okay, that means all the tokens would be present to reciprocate with. Okay, this would free them from his wrath and by these tokens it would free him to his embrace. It would free us from his wrath and free us to his embrace. So we are the children of mercy through Jesus Christ. Okay, we are freed from wrath and free to be embraced of him, making us worthy of him. Okay, so these things, okay, the Apostle Paul is communicating to the Roman Christians, to the Roman believers. Okay, when we say the word believer, we're talking about those which are in covenant with him. There are those which believe in God that are not in covenant with him. We call those covenantless believers. Covenantless believers. They acknowledge God, but they have not yet embraced him to be worthy of him. They have been enlightened, but have never proceeded or progressed to be sealed in the priesthood. It's the priesthood of your faith that seals you. Okay, many will confess Jesus as Lord, but yet walk contrary to him. We also see this in the book of Judges, where the people fear the Lord, but serve Baal. They fear the Lord in regarding his wrath, but they would also serve Baal, which means they were using the wrong tokens. They were using the tokens and philosophies of the people, but not of the priesthood, not of the, not of the covenant priesthood. Okay, Jezebel was a, a covenantless believer. She approached God in the terms of history and culture and race, but not according to the terms of faith. Okay, the terms of faith. So Elijah would confront Ahab regarding the uh, the terms of faith. And we can see that Jezebel had her own theology school, okay, which, of course, Elijah was not uh, called to attend because he was a man of covenant. Now let's go here to chapter 5 of Romans, 
and we see the word justified in peace and faith. Now, we see that there is peace with God. Now, Jesus made distinction between the peace of God and the peace of the world. The peace of the world is circumstantial, but the peace of God, the, the peace we have with God is by faith. Okay, God issues peace for our obedience. The peace of God arrests the agitation and the state of the conscience into its purity. It arrests, which means it restricts it restricts movement. Okay, the peace of God restricts the movement or the agitation of darkness. A light restricts darkness. So the peace of God okay, governs our perception by restricting the influences of darkness. And that's why we need truth. Truth is light. Okay, so Jesus came into this world as light. Okay, he came in this world as truth. And Jesus said he was. Uh, what? The way, the truth, and the life. He was the way which has to do with the way of covenant, the government, the covenant, the stewardship. He was the truth because by his words he was marking the boundaries concerning how we, would, we were to express him. He was marking the boundaries. Jesus is our truth because he marks the boundaries. He sealed these in the blood of his covenant. And he's the life because through this form of communion and through this form of connection, and communication, okay, we receive the essence of his being. Okay, God is love. We receive the essence of his being. We receive life. The soul now is being born in his likeness through the tokens of the covenant. Okay, we eat of him, the tokens of the covenant. When we eat of him, the soul is strengthened. So let's read out here. So hide the word tribulation. The tribulation is, has, has to do with your training. Okay, you're learning the rules. When you first went to school, the teacher or the instructor would tell you the behavior of the classroom. The behavior of the classroom. You can't bring your pets in there. Okay, you have to dress a proper way. You have to act a proper, uh, also in, with proper language. Uh, the classroom is a place of instruction. Okay. So the classroom was designed in a particular way as God's kingdom. Okay. God designed his kingdom in a particular way for your instruction. Okay. To teach you how to behave in your, yourself in the house of God, okay. which, is the, which Paul called the pillar and ground of the truth. Okay. The pillar and ground of truth. This represents his kingdom. Okay. This knowledge represents his kingdom. All right. So experience. How do we experience? Okay, experience has to do with that which is of, okay, of your labor. Okay, the experience has to do with that which is of your labor. Okay, there's something that's taking place and unfolding here. Okay, because we are, we are knowledge born, angels and, and atomites, angels and men, okay, are the only creatures of his creation that live by knowledge. Okay, no other creature lives by knowledge as we do. Okay, that's why we pursue knowledge for, for perfection. But monkeys don't do that because they don't have the conscience or the awareness of that. Okay? Monkeys don't do that. Okay? Monkeys are they're not pursuers of knowledge. They live in trees and they go from one generation to the next generation following the due process of instinct. But we go from generation to generation to resource knowledge. But the, you don't see that in the animal kingdom. Okay? The animal kingdom does not unfold that way. The animal kingdom works instinct. Okay, so it goes on here. So uh, patience, experience, experience, hope. So I have the word hope there. This is the intended goal of the cycle. The intended goal of the cycle is fruit bearing for the purpose of us re-entering into the Father's bosom. We came out from our Father's bosom and came into this dimension. We were born where our Father assigned us to be born. As you were, as I was, and as uh, everybody is. Okay, everyone is born to, to that which God assigned to them so that there's no mistakes. So seeing that now we've been adopted in God's kingdom, okay, we are put into another frame, which means God removed us. We, uh, we came out from our father and our mother, and we are now joined to God. And this is what Jesus said. Jesus said the same thing, that the knowledge I give is going to bring division between uh, father and mother, between children and parents, two against three and three against two. He was talking about a time of separation by new knowledge, which would bring, it would bring those which hear him into a, 
a, a different frame or a new house. Okay, call the kingdom of God. All those which are listening today, if you like to come and covenant with God, okay, if you uh, you have to begin to seek God, you're going to have to also put aside the barriers of your former traditions and your mindset, and you're going to have to seek Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, okay, if you want to come and covenant with God. Okay, well, thank you for listening today, and continue uh, continue to seek the Lord. His grace will abound towards those that seek Him with a, out of a pure heart. And this is Apostle Eric von Ersek here speaking. Have a good day in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be with you all. Amen.